as all of you may know, my name is uh, Robert Wever and I've been asked to um, give my point of view on the validation of methods, on the validation of methods to be used in the laboratory. The presentation of this, uh, this afternoon, of, of today, will be uh, very short, well, not very short, but will be comprised of uh, two main elements. First of all, I will start by um, examining with you the international requisitions for validation of methods and instruments, which is uh, documented in the document ISO 15189, which is a well-known document to everybody who is active in the medical laboratory nowadays. And further on, I will uh, go with you a little bit into detail about the various steps and ex experiments that you have to uh, perform in order to comply with the same ISO 15189. First of all, let us start by uh, examining the ISO 15189, the 2012 edition, which is the latest one and is, which, is one, which is the one that is currently um, active, which is currently yeah, uh, the one that we should apply to. Paragraph or chapter 5, paragraph 3.1.2 states that the laboratory shall verify upon installation and before use that the equipment is capable of achieving the necessary performance and that it complies with the requirements relevant to any examinations concerned. So here we have the first requirement is that we should be, as a laboratory, we should be capable of demonstrating that the instrument that has just arrived into our laboratory is capable to comply and performs the way it should be. This verification, as you may see in this, uh, in this statement, should be done upon installation and before we start producing results for patients. So it's not something that we can do afterwards. This following rule is also pretty much the same. It says that laboratories shall select examination project, uh, procedures which have been validated for the intended use and that the identity of the persons who are involved in the examination process shall be recorded. So afterwards, you can always go back to the, same per to the person and ask him or her, are, were you involved in the validation of the uh, procedure? as was stated in the documents that I have found here in the, in the, in the archives of the laboratory. Yeah? So it should al always be, uh, also be clear the people that are involved in the validation of the method and who is ultimately, who has signed off all of the documents. When we, um, when we talk about the, the laboratory uh, uh, tests, we should also um, focus on the specified requirements. Yeah? We should make sure that those requirements relate to the use of the examination. So that we, um, when we uh, are using uh, a laboratory test, we, when we start to validate a laboratory test, which is needed for a very um, precise measurement of a certain compound that we take that into account and that we use um, procedures to validate the uh, new technique uh, which has special attention to those specific requirements. Yeah? So that if, um, let's say for instance, if a low level of detection uh, is, the, is important to that assay, that we also perform uh, experiments during the validation phase that are relevant to that specific area of validation. And that it's not something that we simply take over from the manufacturer or from the uh, people who are selling us the, um, the new test. The, the next part is a pretty much also an extension of what I have uh, told you before, that when we, um, one thing that's very important to, to remember is or that the ISO 15189 makes a distinction into um, examinations that are being used without modification and that is pretty much yeah, 
all the examinations that are being implemented here in, in Curacao or in Aruba or in Bonaire, for instance, because usually in the laboratory we take over the, um, the uh, procedure as was uh, delivered to us by the uh, manufacturer and we simply uh, put that into practice in our laboratory. We are not very well, uh, to my, the best of my log logic, uh, to the best of my knowledge, we are not uh, modifying methods uh, that much in the laboratory. So this one um, is, yeah, pretty much something that we have uh, told you, uh, that I've told you already, that we uh, use them without modification and that we should be uh, subject to independent verification, which means that the laboratory itself should perform the verification before putting it into use. It's not something that I can rely up on the manufacturer to have it done for me or being told that um, it's something that well, we have done it already uh, at another site and uh, you can simply put it into routine use, the, the, the new test, without, um, without, being, um, without being validated. Um, I'm not sure how this will go on into the future. I know of some, um, how do you say it in English? I'm, I'm looking for the right um, words here, but if you're looking a, in Holland, I know that, for instance, what they are doing is that they are, when they bring in a new instrument uh, for, let's say, hematology, and it's an instrument that will be used by uh, more laboratories in a group or in the whole uh, country, for instance, that one um, laboratory will be like a testing site who will perform a very extensive validation and the other laboratories will simply do a modified validation in which they will test only specific parameters in their own laboratory, but the whole comprehensive validation already took place in, uh, in, the, in the first laboratory in the country. And this is a mean of, yeah, still trying to comply to the, uh, the ISO 15189 by performing a validation, but not as extensive as, uh, as required, but you will simply refer to the, the validation study being performed at the, uh, at the other side. We will, uh, we will touch that, uh, that part later on. Um, it's also necessary that you um, will obtain information from the manufacturer uh, or the, the one that develops the method for um, more information upon the performance characteristics. What is the precision? What is the between run precision? What is the intermediate precision? What is the within day, within day precision? Reference intervals, excuse me. And there is uh, so much information that you can gather from the manufacturer and it's something that the manufacturer also should be uh, given to you. I don't think that nowadays any manufacturer will not provide you that information because otherwise he or she will be, uh, I think, out of business uh, very soon. Now, um, this is something that uh, there are, if, if we go back and um, uh, as I s told you, this is the um, ISO 15189 2012 rule, which is, means that it's, it's in effect since uh, last year. But um, there was a 2007 rule, which is like five years earlier, uh, which is the one that most of the laboratories are accustomed to, to it here in Aruba, Curaçao and Bonaire. And you will see that validation was mentioned in the uh, document, but was only mentioned for a very short part. It was not yeah, being mentioned that much. But you will see in the new guideline, in the, I'm sorry, in the new rule, it's not a guideline, it's a rule, 2012, you will see that much attention has been paid to the validation of methods. So you will see that uh, the same information or the same rule, the same, the same guidance is being um, told over and over again. Now, uh, this, is the, uh, this is another uh, part of the uh, ISO 15189, uh, which also states uh, uh, pretty much this, uh, information that we already know that we should confirm, 
uh, using objective evidence, so we have to perform experiments in order to demonstrate that the performance claims that the manufacturer says that the uh, method has, uh, precision of 3%, is something that we can uh, also achieve in our laboratory. And we should do that, uh, uh, those uh, experiments uh, related to the examination of uh, results uh, you, uh, with, uh, no, with relation to the intended use of the, uh, uh, the uh, test. If something is being on the market for uh, measuring uh, something in a specific uh, concentration uh, area and we start uh, doing experiments in a, a completely different uh, concentration area, it's obvious that you are, are performing validation experiments, but they are not relevant to the intended use of that procedure. Now, also we shall we must document um, what we have done as um, quality, uh, well, very quality minded uh, nowadays. Everybody and you have to uh, provide the information. You have once auditors will visit your uh, laboratory, you have to provide them in with information about all the validations that you have done in the past year, two years, three years, depending upon the scheme that the auditors uh, come to your laboratory. And it is also important to realize that uh, only staff with the appropriate uh, authority uh, can finally sign off the documents. Uh, so, um, for instance, in the big laboratories, it will mean that the clinical chemist has to authorize the validation procedure to be completed that the validation report is valid and that uh, the uh, new method is released for uh, performing laboratory tests using patient samples and that those results may be reported to the requesting physicians. So documentation is a, a, an important part of uh, the whole process. Now we, um, as I told you already, um, most of the methods are without modification. Um, uh, we simply take the manufacturer's instructions uh, and put the, laboratory, uh, put the method into uh, our own laboratory. We don't modify anything, but if we modify, um, if, we, if, we, um, if we do something different from the, order, uh, from the from normal, we should do a more extensive validation. And we will see on this slide that for non-standard methods or for methods that we design by ourselves, now I don't think that here in the islands anybody designs their, their own methods. It's more something for an academic setting, but it's something that we should be aware of. All. Or that we are using methods outside of their scope, intended scope. It's not something that we are very aware of, but uh, I just saw today an, an, a manufacturing claiming that they have put, um, they have brought a new glycated hemoglobin assay on the market. Uh, the reason is very simple: glycated hemoglobin was in use, of, has been in use for for many years now for the control of therapy of patients with diabetics, uh, but recently. Um, International guidelines have also cleared the way for using glycated hemoglobin, HbA1c, in the diagnosis of diabetes. This is clearly, if you start using HbA1c in your laboratory for the diagnosis of diabetes, you're clearly using this method outside of the intended scope, which was, um, um, how do you say it? Um, uh, controlling the the therapy of of diabetes, and yeah, this will this means that you a actually have to validate it uh, for uh, this other scope. Um, I'm sorry for the other uh, the other use outside of the intended scope. I'm pretty sure that most laboratories won't do that here on the island, but it's something that we we should be aware of, um, and. Obviously, if we have validated the method and, use, and afterwards we um, modify it, then it's something that we have to validate or we have to pay at attention to. 
And um, yeah, you have to do a number um, of experiments there. The, the following guidance uh, says that we have to do uh, specific uh, requirements or examine specific requirements for the intended use uh, and you have to be ex uh, ex uh, extensive enough to give the objective data, uh, the inf uh, evidence um, so you can demonstrate all of the areas that I'm going to um, um, show you now. Um, there are a couple it, and I will simply read them up. It's measurement trueness. So uh, if the glucose is 100 milligrams per deciliters, uh, are you actually measuring 100 milligrams per deciliters or are you measuring 90 or something? The accuracy, the uh, precision, uh, repeatability, intermediate precision, uh, within day, between day precision, we have different names for it being used. The measurement of uncertainty, um, if we actually are measuring 90, uh, what is the, um, the, what does the 90 mean? Is it 90 or is it 89? Is it 92? Is it 80? So you have to be capable of providing your physicians with an estimation of the uncertainty of your measurements. You also have the part of analytical specific, uh, specificity. Uh, which means that you have, be, you have to check for interfering substances such as lipemia, hemo, hemolysis, um, and icteria, um, uh, 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 high bilirubin. Uh, sensitivity, detection limit, the um, limit of detection, the limit of measurement, the measuring interval from low to high, and you have to provide information about the, the, um, the diagnostic specificity and the diagnostic sensitivity. Uh, so it's, it's a big chunk of information. But again, that's uh, information that is needed for the extensive validation of methods, which is uh, necessary when you modify methods or when you are setting up a method all by yourself or when you are using methods outside of their intended scope or when you are using, when you are modifying methods that you have already validated. Usually, for routine validation purposes, we will only, and when we are using the manufacturer data and the manufacturer um, instructions for use uh, for the laboratory in the laboratory, and we don't change anything, we usually will use a certain uh, amount of those criteria uh, in our protocols, in our uh, experiments, and of course in our reporting.